Right, before we can start configuring the Hackintosh system itself, what we've got to do is get the media onto a bootable stick, a USB stick. And once we do that, we have a little file called Multibeast. Um, this is the High Sierra edition of it, which I've already went and downloaded. Likewise, I've also got Unibeast, that's the latest version downloaded as well. And you'll see here we have a USB stick, which I'll just quickly bring up in the disk utility. And you'll see it's, so it's a 32 gig device, okay? Now, what I'm gonna show you here is, is the simple prep that you've got to do just to get this configured correctly. Now, the first thing I'm gonna show you here is what probably you and about 99% of other people will probably have done and then I'll show you how to actually save you all of the grief that I've went through. So anyway, if you need instructions elsewhere, if you click on the USB stick itself, click on Erase, whatever volume name you want to give it at the moment, just call it anything, make sure it's the Mac OS Extended Journal. Once you do that, what we'll just do is we'll just call it Hi Sierra, click Erase, and it's going to wipe that. Okay, so that's quite quick. Show the details. Show it's done in a sec. There we go. Right. So that should have done what instructions tell you to do. So we've also got to make sure that you've got the full version of the operating system you want to install on your Hackintosh downloaded, which I've already done. And then what we have to do is run Unibeast. This will guide you through, it gives you all of the instructions on what to do. You can see the website here that you go to to get all of these little utilities. Very, very good site. We'll hit continue. It explains exactly how we're going to go and do this. Hit continue. Continue, continue. We agree, that's fine. So, select the destination, which is that. We will hit continue. So it's High Sierra, which I've downloaded. So the full version is sitting on this Mac itself. So we're ready to go with that. Hit continue. Now you get two different modes there. You can read that and make your own lined up depending on your system. But for me, I'm going to go for the UEFI boot mode. Click that. And then I'm going to hit continue. I'm not going to bother with any of that stuff at all because I'm going to download the driver separately. That's based on the experience I had with an install I went and did earlier. Um, I'm just going to hit continue. It then shows you all the stuff that we're going to do. We hit continue, put in our passwords, hit OK, and now it's going to sit and start to copy files. Now, at this point, you'd expect it to go relatively quick, um, which is what I thought, but it seemed to drag on for absolutely ages, and in fact, I'd left it for a few hours, and then eventually it kept coming up with an error I wiped the stick again, formatted it, tried to partition it because I'd read somewhere that if it's a 32 gig stick, it doesn't particularly like it. Unibeast likes smaller sticks. I tried all of that. And just to sort of prove the point, as I say, what, what we've done here is what I would imagine 99.9% .9 of people have done. Got a stick, stuck it in, wiped it, run Unibeast, and then sat and just waited for these files to copy over, which you would expect to maybe take 10, 15, 20 minutes or something like that. So rather than subjecting to you the waiting time that this is going to take, we'll just pause it at the moment and then we'll bring it back up once this error appears and I'll explain how, how we get past that. Right, so after about, it must have been about six or seven minutes, you can see in front of you, you get this error coming up. Now, it doesn't make any difference what way you format that stick um, using the disk utility makes no difference at all what you do here this is always going to keep coming up or this is what happened with me um, so effectively that wasted me the best part of a day trying to get a solution because online to be honest was very very unhelpful um, and the bottom line is is that it is actually down to the format of the USB stick so what we'll now do is we're going to hit quit and we'll run terminal bring that up so what we'll now do there is, is that we'll quickly run the disk util. I don't know if we can spell it correctly. List. 
Here, what it will do is it will show us the particular drives that we've got in here. So what I'm looking for just now is I'm looking for this one here, which is a 31.1 gig. So it's disk four, okay. So quite important at this stage because you're gonna start wiping drives. So what we do is we do disk util. Um, if I can remember this disk, and this is the important bit. So for me, it's disk four. And set up the structure for the format. And let's just say I'm going to just, I'm just going to say eight. I'm going to just format it as eight gig. Okay. So as you can see, let's start to partition the disk. Okay. So this doesn't take very long just because we've got a small 8, 8 gig partition. Bang, there you go, that's it done and dusted. So this time what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring up the disk utility. I'm going to get rid of the base system because Unibeast doesn't like that. Okay, so there's the USB drive there. So what we're going to do is very quickly erase Mac OS extended journal, erase, let it do that. And again, it only takes a couple of seconds to actually get that done and dusted. There we go, that's it done. We can get all of that out of the road. Once again, we'll run Unibeast. Quickly whiz through that, yep. So again, hit the stick, hi Sierra, UEFI, Hit continue, hit continue, password, return. And then this time, I'm gonna move the mouse pointer just to the little line there. Now what we'll find is this actually only takes a few minutes. It's not that bad at all. So what we'll do is we're just gonna leave that running here just now. And you should then see what happens as it starts to copy all the files. And rather than just sitting waiting the full time for it, needless to say, I'll speed that up a little bit. Uh, just to let you sort of see the kind of way that things start to copy over. So let's just watch that working and uh, then we'll move on to the next stage. Right, there you can see this time install succeeded. And to be quite honest with you, um, had, I, had I had the information a lot uh, sooner, I could have uh, been up and running a lot quicker as well. But anyway, um, let's just hit quit because that's that now done. I'll just drag that over. So we'll open that up. And what we'll also do is the multi beast. We'll take that file. We'll copy that into the USB stick because we will need that as part of the installation, the installation process. But as it stands right now from the real Mac, um, that's everything done. That's us got the, the boot um, USB stick ready to go. So what we have to do now is uh, prep up the PC that we're going to install this on. And one thing I've to, to make note of as well is that again, the hard drive that you use, you will find that you will have a problem unless you actually format it in that way I went and did the USB stick. Um, it's basically down to the partition tables that if they're not right, this thing will not work. So bear that in mind if you get a problem that it doesn't recognise the drive that you will have to go through this as well. So anyway, rather than be babbling on, let's uh, move over to the actual installation side and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so before we can start the software installation, we've got to make sure that the BIOS and this machine is set the right way. Now, the website TonyMacX86.com, it lists the sort of basic uh, stuff to check on uh, to make sure that it's going to be compatible. So what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to go into the advanced, into the processor configuration that we look in here, and everything in there 
is pretty much the default. I'm going to come back out, check the onboard device configuration. So audio is on, the SATA mode's AHCI, which is fine. Um, I've not got Intel multi-display on, I don't need that. So LAN controller's on and LAN boot is off. And if we go to, uh, let's just check, to boot, we'll see here that secured boot, now that there has to be disabled. Okay, so make sure that that's off. I've got legacy e sorry, OPROM, that's enabled. Um, USB support is on. The boot mode I've got set for UEFI, okay. Um, everything else there looks pretty well okay. Uh, power, there's not much to worry about on the power side. Security, the exact same. Um, there's really not much else there that I could see that would cause a problem. Um, everything's enabled under the advanced modes, so hyper threading's on. Speed step, virtualization, CPU XD support, that's on. Basically the only thing there is limit the CPU ID value, that's the only thing disabled, so all looks pretty okay. So what we'll just do is hit exit and we'll reboot. Right, so when it starts to boot up, you'll see that we're presented with a graphical menu. We've got one part that says NTFS, we have another part that says external. So for the start, what we want to do is we want to go to external, just hit return, and look at that, there's our Apple logo. And what it will now do is it will boot off the USB stick. And as you can see, that familiar bar. Right, what you'll see in front of you is the Mac OS utility screen. So from here, this is where we're now going to get the drive prepped up. And if we just have a little zoom in. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into disk utility. And that will basically allow us to get the hard drive we're going to use prepped up. And ready to install the operating system. So the internal drive here it's a C300, it's only a 64 gig device, so it's really just for testing purposes. And what we're going to do is we're going to erase, and we're going to make sure it's Mac OS Extended Journaled, Scheme, it's Master Boot Record, Format, the name of it, we'll just call it Hi Sierra, and if I spell Hi Sierra correctly that would help. And if we hit Erase, it's now formatting the drive and it's saying that it's been done. We can come out of that. So now if we go to install a Mac OS, we'll hit continue. Continue, agree, agree. And now when we get to here, we select the drive that we are going to use, but you'll see straight away we've got a message coming up that's telling us that this disk does not use the GUID partition table scheme. Um, so now what we have to do is format it in the correct way so that this will actually install. So what we'll do is we'll come back out, out of that, Go back to disk utility. Hi Sierra. We'll erase. Erase. Done again. Back out. Install. Continue. Continue. Agree. Agree. Once again, hit the drive, and again we get the same thing. It doesn't use the GUID partition table scheme. So, right, so we're going to go into a loop here, but we're not. What we're going to do is we're going to quickly jump into utilities, into terminal. 
Right, so let's see if we can get this drive formatted so that it'll actually accept the uh, operating system. So what we'll do is we will go to disk util list, see what we've got in here, and the drive I want should be somewhere, there we go, and it's drive disk zero right so that's disk zero so that's fine right so now that we know what it is we will just do disk util partition disk disk zero gbt gh fs plus usb Four gig. So we'll do that. We'll see about formatting the SSD. That's that done. Come back out. Jump back into disk utility. Continue. On the USB one, click erase, so call that Hi Sierra, erase, done, come back out again, go back into install, continue, and once again we're back to the install site, so we'll hit to continue, we will hit agree, agree, this time you'll see the difference now. We can click it, install, and that's it now starting to install Mac OS High Sierra. Now this will require a couple of reboots. Um, so what we'll do is we'll let it install what it's going to install, and at the relevant bits I'll cut into them, explain what's happening, and we'll see how it goes. So that's us nearly at the end of the first part of the installation. And what should now happen is, yep, there we go, is the system's going to reboot. Now at the moment it will not boot from the drive that I'm using because that's, that's all got to be completed near the end of the installation phase. So we'll go back to this screen again. So this time I'm going to boot from the HFS one. Return. Again, we'll have the Apple logo. So that's all going to boot back up and that should now continue the installation. Right, I'm sure you'll recognise that screen. Let's just press the keyboard. Right, United Kingdom. Continue. British. Continue. I'm not going to try to transfer any information. Uh, boom, 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 boom. I'm not going to sign into my Apple ID. Yep, I'm going to skip. Right, terms and conditions. Yep, I agree. Right, so let's put in my name, password. Hit continue. That's creating the account. Uh, continue. Right, setting up your Mac. Wow, there you go. There's the desktop appeared. And we're now at the bit. It's saying that the keyboard can't be identified. And so press the key immediately to the right of the shift key. Okay, done. And we have the desktop here, but we're not finished yet because what we'll now do is we'll take MultiBeast, copy that over, because you'll see that the screen resolution is wrong because the video drivers and that aren't in place. But I will have to download the video driver separately for, for, for this machine. But if we go to MultiBeast, 
we open that up. We'll go to quick start and we're going to go to UEFI boot mode, which is fine. Um, now the drivers, this is where the fun begins. This is where it'll be a lot of hit and miss to try and find things that's actually going to work. Um, so you will need to play about with this a wee bit. At this stage for the audio, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go for, if I can find it here, the optional HD 3000, HD 4000, HDMI audio. I'm just going to go for that just now because I know that does work, um, though I don't get the option for the, the, the audio in the Mac itself, so I can't really change the volume in that, but I can control it from the monitor. But that's fine just now until I sort of mess about and get something else sorted out. Um, to the disc, um, again, it's all working anyway. I probably won't have to bother with that, but again, if I even went for, I'll just, I just won't even put that in actually. Miscellaneous, I'm going to leave that. Networking, um, what we have, is we have a whole range of different ones to choose from. So what I'm going to choose here is the Realtek RTL8 treble one version 2.2.1. I'm going to go for that one, which is fine. Um, USB, I'm just going to click third party USB 3. And bootloaders, we've got it set for the UEFI boot mode. And we're not going to bother to customize, but what we are now going to do is hit build. We're going to click on install. We agree, password in. Okay. So that's putting the bootloader in now. That's the Clover UEFI. Hit the drivers. And the install has succeeded. Right, so what we'll do out of that we will restart we will take out the USB stick we have it coming up so what we'll now do is we're just going to hit return like that boot that's the mouse pointer name return as you can see, the screen's a bit strange and a bit slow. Click into Safari. Google. And there you can see. And you can even do a search very quick. NVIDIA drivers from the Tony Mac X86 site. Try that one. Okay. And there we go. Continue, agree, install. Yep. Running the installation scripts. Nearly there. That's us. Let's hit restart. And all we now have to do is, oh, there we go, it's done it already. The screen resolution has changed. Log in. And wow, what a difference. We've got the full screen resolution. And again, I'm on Safari. Straight up, not a problem, which is absolutely fine. Right, after a bit of messing about, um, what I had to do is if I just go to the drivers, is I ended up having to use the Voodoo HDA 2.8.6 drivers to give me audio. And what it does is it gives me digital out via HDMI, which is what I'm using on this machine with this monitor. 
and um, what I'm going to do is just jump to YouTube rather than cause me any problems I've asked it to look for royalty free music um, let's just have a little look here and let's just see if anything actually plays So you're looking for free music, maybe something special? Oh, we have got sound, there we go. So I'm pressing the volume control on my keyboard, which isn't working, which is no great surprise. If I go to system preferences, if I go to sound, show the volume in the menu bar, that's greyed out. The only thing it lets me do really is just select it. The audio I'm going to have to control at the moment until I can get a better driver via the monitor itself, which to be quite honest isn't really a problem. Um, put it on to full screen mode. Fine. Not a problem. It's up, it's quick, it's going. Right, in this section, this is the Hackintosh. Um, I'm running Camtasia at the moment to grab this screen. But you'll see we've got Mac OS High Sierra. It's coming up as a 27 inch late 2013 machine. It's telling us we've got the Intel Core i7 at 3.59 gigahertz, 16 gig. It's got the NVIDIA graphics card and there's a serial number, whatever the heck that's came from. The display, it's telling you we're using the Dell U3415W monitor. You can see the resolution on it. Storage, you can see, there you go, CD-ROM, DVD. And we've got the SSD drive there as well. 16 gig of memory. Support, services, everything's basically running. Uh, if I quickly start up uh, Final Cut Pro, you'll see we've got version 10.4 and what I'll do is I'll even try and get it to fit in the screen if possible and just to prove the point that, as I say, this is the Hackintosh and it will run the app, so I'm just going to fit it as best I can in the screen here there we go so again we can go to file new library we'll call it test it's fine and again file we can say new event yeah fine new project Fine. Okay. Custom settings video. Let's set it for 1080p. That's fine. I'll go with that just now, which is fine. Um, what have we got? Let's quickly throw something in there. Hit the spacebar. Plays it fine. Drag something else in. Let's drag something else. As you can see, it's all going in fine. Windows T to get the fades coming in again. We'll start it there. That'll play. We should get a fade, of course. There's the fade. Fair enough. There's the title. And it's playing fine. Again, subtitle description, yep, all of that's playing fine. And if I want to basically save that out, I can share it. Uh, what do I say? Well, I could send it to an Apple device, I'll just say 1080p. There you go, it comes up. Share up here. I'll bring that into the window. And you'll see there you go, it's rendering without any problem at all. 
Um, needless to say, I suppose if I start to push this, um, it might cause a problem. Um, but it's not really going to be used as a work machine. This is really just more of a kind of a bit of fun just to see if I could actually get this Hackintosh up and running it. And I hear so many people talking about it and I hear about all of the problems that um, it just sort of makes me wonder, you know, if it is as hard. But I, I've just been lucky because the equipment I've got is pretty compatible with it. Um, again, what we got? Sound effects, tune with nothing really there. So effectively, you know, that's that's it. I mean, if it's something longer I could show you, that's fine. But I think we're proving the point that the software here is running absolutely fine. Put it to full screen, which needless to say, you're not going to see the full screen. But um, there you go, click, bang, away it goes. So there you go. Um, there's the Hackintosh done. I'm sure there's a few other wee bits that I can tweak here and there, but at the moment this thing's operational, seems to be working okay. Um, all I can say is if, any, if you've got a similar machine, you've got any questions to ask, if there's anything I can help you with, I'll certainly try my best. Um, but needless to say, if you've got different equipment and you've got problems, not much I can do about it. You'll just have to hit the various forums and see what help you can get there. But anyway, I hope this has been of some interest to some people. and. Um, I'd just like to thank you for taking the time to sit and listen to me babble as I sort of do all of this. And uh, I'm sure there'll be a few people put me correct in certain bits I've maybe made mistakes since. But um, once again, thanks very much for watching one of my videos and uh, hopefully I'll see you again.